Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss. I'm back again with another video and today I'm going to do the real review of the Motorola Photon 4G from Sprint. Alright? Now, you've seen all my videos before. You already know what time it is. We're not going to waste a whole bunch of time bullshitting with intros and all that. We're just going to get right to business. Alright? Y'all know how I do when I get these phones now. The first thing I do is, to be fair, when I'm before I do a real review on the phone, I got to rock that phone for a week straight. All right, so now you've seen the unboxing last Sunday. So this is exactly a week now that I've been using this phone as my main number. All right, so I took my Evo 3D, put it as my backup phone. Still got the Blackberries and the iPhone and all that. Put all those to the side, and I've just been rocking the Photon all week long, straight up. That's, that's basically as my only phone. I even went out a couple of times, and I only brought this phone with me to make sure that I'm forced to use it. All right? Now, with that being said, you've seen the unboxing. You've seen the floor seal of approval. This phone is still a solid go, all right? On the 1 to 10, I'm giving this phone a solid 10, all right? But also, now, y'all know when I get phones or tabs or anything I get, you know, I go hard. I go really hard to try to find stuff that I don't like about it, all right? Because, you know, I don't got to report back to none of these companies and all that. You know, I don't get paid for this shit. So I'm basically trying to help y'all out, and I'm trying to dig deep and find anything I don't like about this phone, all right? And I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. Not too much stuff I don't like about it. But I did find a couple of things wrong with it, or not say wrong with it, a couple of things I don't like fresh out the box, but stuff that I found easy fixes for, all right? So let's talk about that first. Now, the first thing I don't like about the phone is the battery. Now, you can't really tell now because I had it charging, you know, for like the last hour before I did this video because I didn't want to die on me, but I took it off the charge at 2 o'clock, and by 10 o'clock, it's basically almost dead, right? So the battery kind of sucks on it. But at the same time, that all depends on how you use your phone. You know, for a dude like me, if, if you kind of like me and you got your Facebook and Twitter and Foursquare and, you know, you're playing words with friends and you got that, you know, push notifications running in the background. If you're using your Twitter and you like to have your timeline refreshed every 10 minutes, you know, shit like that, that's going to really kill your battery. Also, if you like to have the screen bright and you like to have the vibrating and the rings and all that, that's going to kill your battery also. So there's a, you know, it's an easy fix for that. You could just turn the brightness down, take off all the vibrations, you know, set your refresh intervals to 30 minutes or an hour instead of 10 minutes and all that, whatever. But for me personally, you know, I like to be in the loop. I want to know shit that's going on when it's going on. So it kind of defeats the purpose for me, you know, if I turn all that stuff down and I got to be manually checking Twitter or I got to be, you know, getting uh, my timeline refreshed after an hour. So I'm not really feeling that. But like I said, easy fix, you know, you adjust your settings and all that. Also, you know, CDR.com, they got the extended batteries coming out. So battery life, you know, it sucks out the box, but that's not a big issue. That's, that's no reason to not get the phone because any smartphone nowadays, you're going to have an issue with the battery if you're running a whole bunch of apps at the same time and you're running a whole bunch of shit, you know, in the background. So that's one thing. The next thing, the lock screen. All right. Now, the lock screen, you got to remember that this is Android 2.3.4. This is the newest build. You know, you would think that the lock screen was a little more customizable or whatever. The lock screen is pretty standard. It's kind of whack, you know, and it's a little, it seems like a little delay when you do, when you do the lock screen. I don't know if it's just me, but I'm not really feeling how the lock screen goes like that. Let me show you again. You see, when you, when you unlock it, sometimes it's a little bit of delay or whatever, and I just wish that they would have made the lock screen a little more customizable or whatever, but, you know, that's just something I don't like which is an easy fix for that and I'll show you one right now now if you like your HTC Evo or if, you know if you know anybody who has the Evo and you like this shit you like the ring from the Sense 3.0 let me show you something that's kind of tough alright go to the market and download this there's two of them now there's a free version and there's the paid version I always get the paid version because you know I support the developers and also there's always more features in the paid version but you know if you want to try it out first try this app out right here okay Agile Lock. All right, so I'm going to turn it on and hit start. Okay? Now, let me show you something that's kind of hot. Now, all my dudes that got Motorola phones and you like that HTC Sense 3.0 kind of lock screen and that feel, check this out. All right? Now, I'm going to power the, the phone is just off. Now, this is how it looks when you power it back on. As you can see, just like the Sense 3.0, same way I could grab an icon. And, and drop it into the ring or I could just pop it open just like that all right so let me show you that again all right now this is um the agile lock give you that sense 3.0 lock 
little vibration when it opens up. That's a go, okay? So that, that solves the, the, the lock screen non-customizable issue, you know what I'm saying? And everybody knows you could get ADW launcher and um, put a whole bunch of shit on it or whatever and uh, change that lock screen up. I'm just talking about fresh out the box, all right? As you can see that, you know, the two things, the battery and the lock screen, simple things. I, me personally, I just, I don't like them, but, you know, like I said, I always got to find something I don't like about the phone to keep it on it with y'all. And the last thing that I found, you know, like I said, I've been digging deep for a whole week. Not too much stuff I don't like, but the last thing I found I don't like really is the front facing camera. Okay, now the front facing camera is not 3 megapixel, not 2 megapixel, it's VGA quality, which basically means it's, it's trash, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know how much video calling you're doing or whatever, or, you know, taking the, uh, the official old school MySpace, you know, pose when you're going like this. Yeah, I don't know how much of that you're really doing, but um, the front facing camera is not the best, you know what I'm saying? It's not that great. But, I mean, it gets the job done. I've done a few video calls using Tango. And it works fine. I mean, you, you you know, the person sees you and all. That's basically all it needs to do. So that's it. All right. So that's all that, you know, like I said, I, I've been going all week long. And that's all I found that I didn't like about this phone so far. Now, let's talk about what I do like about it. All right. First of all, the build on the phone. This has to be the best build on the phone out right now. Okay. You heard me right. This has to be the best build. The phone is lightweight. It has a durable feel to it. It doesn't feel like cheap plastic. Doesn't feel like cheap materials. Like you've seen in the unboxing, all of the all of the convenience keys are like textured. You know what I'm saying? Like it has a nice feel to it. You can't beat this bill. All right, you can't beat it. It feels great. All right. Also, when you power it on, the screen the screen is extra bright. It's crystal clear. You know, it's not super AMOLED, but I mean, it's like the next best thing. All right, this screen is super clear, it's responsive, everything works. All right, now you see I got all, all of the Android apps work on this, all right, so you don't have to worry about, you know, if your app is uh, optimized for the phone or not, everything works on this phone, all right. All the notifications come through, as soon as I get a Facebook, it pops up right on the top, if you can see that, you know, everything works. The speed on this phone, this phone is super fast all right this is extra fast I'm, I'm not even talking about on Wi-Fi on a regular you know sprint network this phone is blazing fast all right probably the fastest I use yet all right what else the sound on this phone this phone might actually be too loud all right let me repeat that too loud now that's that's never a problem for me or if you're kind of dude and you work outside and you know your phone is in your pocket or you you know you're working in places doing construction or somewhere where that you need to have that phone loud trust me this phone is super loud and when you're playing music on it it's extra loud okay let me matter of fact let me see if I can pull something up real quick and um and, and let you know what I'm talking about let's see if I got the ring of pro on here like I said I downloaded everything on here all right, you see all my apps up in here. Let's go to Ringo Pro and see if I got any music on here yet. Let's see. All right, we don't have too many uh, songs on here yet, but um, I'll just play a, a ring so you can hear it. You hear that sound? I mean, this, you, you might not get the full effect of this on the video, but this is the loudest phone that I use since the old school Nextels. And you know them shits was mad loud. This phone is extra loud. All right, I mean, you working somewhere and you underground and you, or you on a bus or something, you're not going to you know miss a, a notification if you got a Motorola Photon, all right? And as you know with other phones, to name a few, the Evo 3D, speaker's kind of low on it. You know what I'm saying? Speaker's a little bit low. So this is a go. Now, if you work somewhere in the office or something, or you know you got your phone in your pocket all the time and you can feel the vibration, then that's not really a big deal for you. But for me, I like a nice loud phone. So when I'm outside, you you already see my car test, my uh, camera test videos. You know my engine is mad loud. You know what I'm saying? So I got the music on blast. I need, I still need to hear my notifications though. You know what I'm saying? So this, you can hear it with the music on blast. You can hear it when you're doing a buck on the highway and you got that room room behind you. You can hear all that shit. This is a go, all right? This phone is a definite go. You see in the unboxing, I gave it a 10. I'm sticking to that. This phone is a solid 10, all right? Now, the main question that everybody's gonna ask me is, what's better, the Photon 
or the Evo 3D, all right? So I'm gonna do part two of this video in a couple of minutes and I'm gonna answer that question for you. But um, like I said, if you gotta spend $600 because if you don't gotta upgrade, this phone's gonna run you 550 plus tax. So that's gonna be $600. So the last thing you wanna do is get a phone and um, it doesn't feel like you, you, know, you got your money's worth. Trust me when I tell you, all right? This is worth the $600, worth every penny. Let me show you some other stuff I did to it. Now, with this lock screen, you can change these icons. I put, um, I put these icons on there myself, but you can put whatever you use the most. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knows I use my Viper the most, start my car, my Google Voice, Foursquare, and Facebook. You know, that's the ones I use the most. But um, let's take a look at the keyboard. All right, so we pull up a message. Now, say we're looking at it. The standard keyboard on this phone is just like any other new Android phone that's out, which is kind of whack. But if you want to get a nice keyboard, go to the market, download, download a perfect keyboard. And this is what it looks like. All right. Now, it's fully customizable. I made it like this myself with the little red tint in the background and the lime green letters. You know, that's because I be doing most of my typing at nighttime. So when you're out outside at night, trust me, you're going to see these green letters. But you can make it any color you want. It's going to give you that gingerbread look. And it's also going to be like, um, you know, with the uh, word corrections and the suggestions, all right? So if you don't know how to spell too much, just type in the first couple of letters and you get a whole bunch of choices, all right? So that's a go. That's perfect keyboard or gingerbread keyboard, either one. Perfect keyboard is more customizable to me, so I would suggest get perfect keyboard, but you could get gingerbread keyboard also. Let me show you what gingerbread keyboard looks like. Now this will look, um, I'll pull it up on the, on the Evo 3D because I used a gingerbread keyboard on that one. All right, this is what gingerbread keyboard looks like stock gingerbread keyboard but you can put this on any android all right so you put that on your photon you're good to go you don't got to worry about that uh the factory joint now another thing that people want to know about is um how's the motorola blur all right now if you like me you know i'm an htc head you know what i'm saying i've been rocking with htc the last couple of years strong you know what i'm saying it's hard to get used to something and then give something else a fair try you know what i'm saying so even when i went to sprint and i played with the photon in there I was like, you know what, I'm not really feeling the Moto Blur too much. But let me tell you something, my dudes. The Motorola Blur is a go. Alright? It's a go. Everything is crystal clear on and it's easy to use. Let me show you, let me show you an uh, example. Let's take a look at um the social app, the social media uh, app. Alright? So now when you hit social media, you see this is a, a feed from Twitter. Alright? So now. Say I want to just, um, you know, check all my stuff. I can see Facebook right here. You see a little F. You got Facebook feeds. I could just go right onto it, drop a comment. And this is from the widget. Drop a comment, drop a like or whatever. You know, this is um, Twitter. I can retweet something or just, you know, hit somebody up. You know, scroll through. You can set up your four I mean, your Facebook, your Twitter, MySpace. Set up all your networks and they'll flow all in the same, in the same widget. All right. So this is a go. Now also say I want to just set my status, you take it to set status, and now you can update your Foursquare, your Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, update everything at once. So I type in the status, boom, send it up there, all right? So the Motorola Blur, you know, it might take you a couple of minutes to get used to. Now I'm going to keep it real, it's not, it's not better than Sense 3.0, but the Motorola Blur is nothing, I mean uh, the Blur, trust me, it's nothing to sleep on, all right? It's, it's, it's not whack, all right? So the Motorola Blur is a go, it just might take you a couple of minutes to get used to it, but um, this phone is a solid go, all right? The camera on it, you already seen the camera test. The video works good, the camera's crystal clear. I mean, I'm giving this phone a solid 10. I'm stamping it down with the floor seal of approval. You already know how that go. All right, so I'm gonna make part two of this video real quick, and I'm gonna answer that question, which one is better, the Evo or the Motorola Photon 4G, all right? It's your boy Floss. Come back in a couple of minutes for part two, all right? Deuces.